acting your first kind of creative outlet or what was your first creative outlet? Always. You know what's funny? Like, I guess it's now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, I, that's probably a blessing that I didn't realize is like, I always wanted to be an actress. Oh, it's so big. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Hello and welcome to Filmmakers On, the podcast for filmmakers, by filmmakers and the people that love media. Hello, I'm Jay Horton. And I'm Sean A. Reed. And today, it's a very special episode, like after school special special. We're talking to Sadie Katz, a writer, director, actor. But first, Skylark Bliss is a one-stop rental house for all your G&E needs. They specialize in two-ton sprinter packages, which are perfect for music videos, documentaries, short films, TV and indie features. Their custom designed vans are equipped with industry standard grip and lighting gear. They offer the newest LED, tungsten, and HMI lighting. So if you're looking for the state of the art solutions with unbeatable prices, please check out www.skylarkbliss.com. They're here to help support you and your vision. Yeah, Skylark's run by a good friend of ours, Casper Scouron, who uh, was the DP on Death Day. So we've uh, had firsthand knowledge of his packages and work, and it's very good. I highly recommend him to any filmmakers out there. Absolutely. Uh, so today we're introducing shout-outs to movies by members of our Filmmakers on Amazon Prime Facebook group. And today's movie is by director Brian Barnes. Uh, it's a little indie flick called The Redeeming. Uh, it's available on Amazon Prime. It's a British indie. It was uh, nominated for Best Thriller at the National Film Awards there. It actually beat out Annihilation, which has about a thousand times the budget. <laughs> um, <laughs> they shot the movie in nine days. It's kind of a misery-esque th uh, thriller. Um, has really solid performances. Uh, it's pretty well shot. Um, it had a 3.7 out of 5 on Amazon, and it had something like 109 reviews. Um, it looks like it's doing really well. I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. Um, there seemed to be a natural construction uh, of visual energy and tension. Um, but yeah. at first, we've got our great interview, which I don't need to say a lot about because I think you're going to get so much from it from Sadie Katz. She, you can see why she's working so much today. So without further ado, uh, let's bring in Sadie Katz. So Sa Sa Sadie Katz, <laughs> welcome to Filmmakers On officially. Thank you. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Um, Thank you for making out. And the sun came out for a little while. I know, uh, I'm shocked. Yeah. It's the, not going to stay, though. No, it's no, not. No, We're gonna but have to... the, the clouds parted for your entrance. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I, I wish it would have gave me a better hair day, but we'll, <laughs> we'll survive. It is crazy to have this much rain in L.A., though. It's yeah. Like... The L.A. River is, is overflowing. I know. <laughs> it overfloweth. And we're <laughs> such brats because I'm like on the phone going, I'm not going anywhere this weekend. I'm totally done. And then I talk to other people and they're like, we're in negative 20 degrees. Yeah. Our, yeah. our dog just froze our solid. Dog, yeah. Like our hair is freezing and I'm like, do you know? And our heat is off. <laughs> and our heat is off. Oh, like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, but we live in California because... Yeah. We're spoiled. Yeah. Just a little bit. And you are a native Southern Californian, aren't you? I'm you're from Orange of, County. You are you're the second now. We've yeah. only had two natives. Really? Most of us are Midwesterners who come through here, oddly enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, you're, but you're I repping. feel when you move to LA, it's like it's actually funny because people are like I I knew people when I was a kid who had never even been to LA. From Orange, yeah, they, from Orange County. You're like it's an hour away. <laughs> like they've never been to the Getty. They've never and it's they the Orange Curtain from our side. Well, you know? it is you the do. Orange Curtain. <laughs> so you're like, mm. I, I'm pretty cool with Republicans because my family's Republican, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and because like I grew up in Orange County. Now, Republican I, heaven. I yeah. <laughs> I so I'm not, but I'm I can't be like you know I can't hate I the amount of hatred that some people have. Oh, I'm yeah. like. I'm like, dude, they're just over there. There's a bunch of them. And they, <laughs> they believe in this stuff. You got to give them like. Well, and it's very clean there. Like it's very, it's a one. It, like as soon as you cross, like I don't know how much you've driven across. It's like I've the streets, there, the roads get better as soon as you, as soon it's as you Jesus. get out of LA. I swear to God, they Woo! love Jesus. It's Jesus, and now I'm going to be racist. It's Jesus and Asians. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, I could see <laughs> they that. keep everything like all over Irvine is clean because everyone's going to school or working their ass off. Actually, I did date an Asian girl. At, excuse me, China. Yeah, she was Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> Let's be specific. It, and yes, it was very clean, and <laughs> like they were tiny. very. Clean. It's like, I don't know. We're gonna get in trouble. I know. We're like saying we're making, but we're making positive stereotypes. Yeah. Right. yeah exactly. I, however, am not from anywhere clean and tidy. I'm from Anaheim. Okay, yes, ah, okay. which is not, that's yes. That's where Bravo's from. Yes, yeah. so that's oh. not necessarily so clean like, and tidy. Okay. <laughs> like, people have this visual. I go, oh, I'm from Orange County. And they're like, oh, the OC. And I'm like, like Valley Girl. no, there was a strip club down the street. Like, <laughs> literally across the street. It wasn't... The thing about Orange County that's weird is they don't have a ton of strip clubs. What they have is bikini bars. Ah, I've bikini. never even heard of a bikini bar. Well, that's that way you can get fully drunk. <laughs> well, that's they don't do lap dances or anything. But in L.A., you can yeah, lingerie and in like they're serving you and. It's kind of weird. It's do they picture dance? a dive bar. Oh, no. yeah. Well, they do, sort of. So it's, do, ca- so it's kind of well, like a Hooters? picture a dive bar. Yeah, it's sort yeah. of like a Hooters, except it's a small dive bar. Okay. And you get, like, you know, the person comes out, and it's, it's some of the times the girls are hot, but they have them, they used to have them everywhere. Like, okay. they had the drive through coffee <laughs> bikini bar. Oh. So they're this really conservative thing. <laughs> Orange County. Mm-hmm. Right. With a lot of crazy things. But I grew up, like, um, in Orange County, and then I graduated Norwalk High School, and there was, like, two blonde-haired girls in my entire school. Yeah, Norwalk mm-hmm. is definitely not yeah, considered. Sort of. Yeah, I was, was like, wow. five points. So I have I have this really cheesy look that I just, like, I'm blonde hair, and I'm blue-eyed, and I'm, like, <laughs> I have <laughs> my, you know, and but actually, like, I'm kind of from the hood. Like I'm, I'm about as hood. Norwalk Five Points is about as hood as you get. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty much. I mean, so you know. <laughs> so, so what was that experience like? Being this person who's kind of maybe sticking out a little bit in this very kind of like somewhat sterile but contradictory environment. Like you're reading, you've you've yeah. called it a little bit yourself. It's like I got a bikini club over here, but then it's the cleanest place I can find. Well, you know what's funny is I have a son who's part Mexican. Mm-hmm. And he looks really Mexican. So I think I don't want to like but I experienced like a lot of racism growing mm. up because like I was really afraid of like the cholas. They you know, so yeah. I think I got bullied a lot. It's like the skinny, blonde, you know, yeah, like dark circles and like, and you know, um, I wasn't a fighter, but I had a big mouth. Mm. So I think there was a lot of like, like by the time I was older, like I also went into a conservative religion. I became a Jehovah's Witness. Mm. My family didn't, okay. but by the time I left my religion. And I, I, so I had to leave Anaheim because that was kind of part of being, you know, all my people from my church were there. And Jehovah's Witnesses, when you leave, you're excommunicated. Right. So I moved to L.A., but by that time, I, you know, I had like a chip on my shoulder, but it was a good chip. Hmm. It was like, you know, I would say I was worldly. So when did you start finding performance and finding it was acting your first kind of creative outlet or what was your first creative outlet always you know what's funny like i guess it's now that i'm older i'm like oh I, that's probably a blessing that i didn't realize is like i always wanted to be an actress hmm. so no questions no like i don't like from four i was writing it and then i used to my mom had this um big green typewriter you know when there's huge ones mm-hmm. like this, this is what you pick up and you, like, kill somebody in the movie, <laughs> you know? Like, that's... It, and it didn't have an E. Mm. Like, it, the E was broken. <laughs> the E was broken. But I would type up plays, and mm. I would... I Like, I always did... I was an avid reader, mm-hmm. and I was, like, obsessed with, um, like, Wizard of Oz and things like that. And I was mm. obsessed with doing, like, community theater, and I wasn't very talented because I was so scared because mm. they're not scared I wanted it more than any kid at least now it's different mm. now like my son goes to Manhattan Beach school and I'm like shit there's a lot of talented kids here yeah. like I was the only one who wanted to be an actress in my school mm. like no joke so even in like in high school they were they would have auditions and it was like 
seven people would show up. And so it really wasn't the competition because they weren't even – it wasn't – well, because often in the no, hood it's not something – it's not something that they're going to be doing. It's kind of like it's not cool. It's <laughs> not cool. It's and not I was cool. like, I was like, you know, every day the announcements would come on and like I would wait and I would pray inside like, you know, I just, I get even choked up thinking oh, about wow. it. Like I would be like, I wanted to act and I never wanted to be famous. It, like that to mm-hmm. me, that's like a new thing. Mm. It's kind of. I just, like, it meant something to me. And I never, like, you know, I would watch the Oscars on my black and white TV. I'm showing that I'm older. I still had a black and white TV. <laughs> yeah, but it was more about, like, like it just being this amazing thing. It was, like, wow, I get to feel this. And the same thing with writing. Um, I wrote, I mean, I went to this kind of, I went to Holder Elementary. It was, and most of the kids were either very poor broken families and there's a lot of bullying going on this is like when Mm -hmm. it was acceptable to still bully um but like i wrote a play that was like stephen and the three ghosts it was like (laughs) an anti-drug play done like a christmas carol you know Mm -hmm. where the ghost say this is what your life's gonna be like and i like rehearsed it during lunch and then ended up getting the principal to do an assembly and close down the school and um, do the play, which is, I think maybe now that wouldn't be as extraordinary. Hmm. It would be cool. Yeah. Like, but then I think they were like, what? You, you wrote a play? Because kids <laughs> just were almost like, they, I, I don't know. They're, like Especially in those areas, kids aren't like that. Hmm. They just... You know, I, I don't even think they were in, like, baseball leagues. There was, like, a couple of that one nerdy kid. Everyone was too poor. And so in that way, I actually got a lot of encouragement to and what do about that. And what about at home? Because it sounds like school, sounds like that environment. Where, but it, sounds, it seems like you were someone who had probably pronounced on some level, I'm going to be an actress. Oh, yeah. Like, it, well, I mean, I was. Like, you know, you're just, when you're, like, a storyteller, you're mm-hmm. a storyteller. When you're a singer, you just... When you're an actress, like, you're just constantly filling everything. And your family's like, oh, God. (laughs) Like, oh, she's such an actress. So my mom did this thing. My mom was an odd doc, but she really encouraged me. And she, you know, and the way she, she didn't encourage me the way I would have liked, which is, you know, driving me to auditions. (laughs) Right. Like, it would have been better for me to do it younger. But she did, like, like push me like uh, you know i auditioned for west side story and i wanted it so bad but i couldn't sing very well and i couldn't do choreography very well but i want to play anybody's and um for for um cerritos college dinner theater Mm -hmm. and i wanted this so badly and i was still in high school and i didn't get it I didn't get past the first part. My mom was like, you call them up and you tell her that you can look great in a ponytail and that if she just gives you a chance. So I wrote out like with my mom a whole speech and called back the director and, you know, pleaded like I didn't get to the acting part, but I'm going to act the heck out of this. Mm. So my mom was kind of like that. Like I wanted to work for Disneyland Mm. and, you know, the first time I went, I didn't get it. And I like I was, you know devastated and my mom was like well you're gonna go back and you'll do it so that's something that something that to someone who was just like just keep going or just keep just keep pushing going. and never let no be the only answer you hear you know which is I mean, very important it does sound acting, like that's rubbed off a little yeah. bit too well like for acting it's like you know it took me 10 years before i booked a lead in an independent film well, that's a that's a decent haul. Like you've right got at, fifty. I mean, you have a significant amount of acting yeah. credit, so it's not like. Well, I was still know. raising. Like I was a single mom, so okay. I was raising my son. But, but, it was like you know doing student films, which I don't have listed. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you, know, you do all those student films, and and like by the time I I right when I hit thirty, I was like, everyone was like, well, you gave it a shot. <laughs> 
I'm like, <laughs> I said, well, Party no. over. Yeah, yeah, like, you're you're dead. You're over. And, you know, even acting teachers kind of, because yeah. they're so old school. That's why that perpetual 29 joke is there. You don't, yeah, you don't, you don't tone true. 30. It's, it's not true. It's it really so isn't. not true anymore. But, like, my acting teachers were like, well, you know. And, That's and another, and another You're another so amazing, yeah. Sadie. Why don't you do theater, which I still would like to do. Um, you know, I have one acting teacher that was just amazing, and he, and I love Mark Majarian, and he really encouraged me. But they were like, "It's tough out there, and you're a single mom." And at thirty was when all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh, there, I'm booking, and I'm booking <laughs> against these twenty three year olds because I started being able to play sexy, and a twenty three year old, she may look sexier than me." You know, of course, it's, right. but it comes with the territory. But she doesn't know what sexy is. Like It's a different thing. She doesn't a, have ownership of it in the same way that you would. No, it's like, well, it's also like they're so afraid to, like, to not look good. Hmm. So there was a point when I got, when I started to realize and, like, sit at auditions and go, oh, I'm going to take it from this girl who's, you know, a knockout and intimidated me when she came in the room, but I would hear it and go, Oh, she like, you know, she's yeah. screaming from, ah! and <laughs> I'm like, got, I've got all the yeah. numbers be, of damage. They'll be I'm calling like, the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> the police will be there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, and you're also like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm a woman. I'm going to go for broke and like, fuck it. Nothing to lose. I'm I have go nothing to out. lose. I'm already 30. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> if I listen but, to them. Yeah. But it's really, I mean, there is like that, that thing that I did get from, being from Orange County and with just not giving up and like being someone who would like throw up before every audition. Mm. After a while, you're just like, okay, let's go. <laughs> do I got any chunks on me? Fuck it. I'm were, like gonna do this. Were you right? Were you writing this whole time as well? As I, I know yeah. that that's something you started to do. Where did that come from? Um, again, like I always wanted to write. I always was writing plays. Um, or writing short stories. It was like a regular motif. I did, um, in high school, I did something called like dramatic and chirp and speech competitions. Mm. But you would also write your own stories and then you would, which now it's a, a big thing is storytelling. Mm -hmm. So I always kind of thought that I would be an actress, but I wanted to be a screenwriter. And I really, the one thing I haven't done yet is, is do a novel, which like I really wanted to do or a memoir is, was really important to me. I wanted to do a documentary. Like I, I think I, it's not just acting. I mean, like you guys, mm -hmm. like, you know, you want to have your fingers kind of in everything. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's, there's something about it where you're like, well, I'm an artist and like art is a lot of different forms. And sometimes you realize, um, with storytelling and writing, like I'm disgusting when I do it. I don't know. Like I, I don't shower. I start right. smoking like mysteriously. I'm having a glass of wine at three in the afternoon. But when you're done, you're like, this came from nothing. Like how did yeah. this even happen? And there's, it's, you know, I, I just did something at Circus Road that I, I co-wrote and showing up on the set. There, it's you know a killer clown movie. It's like yeah. bridesmaids meets a killer clown movie. But I'm showing up on set and I see the shower they built, hmm. and I'm like, oh you my imagined it, God! <laughs> I'm like, that's our shower, <laughs> and it's and there's something so fun about that. And then seeing like the world of it, and even even seeing that that world didn't come out like the way you pictured it. Yep, I'm just impressed, and I'm like. Like, I created this world. This didn't exist. I mean, it's that. And then there's also, like, really, I don't know, writing can be really heartbreaking. Yeah. Because like, you're like, I didn't create this world. Who created this world? That's not what I wrote. Why did, in, like, the first film that I um, that I, I co-wrote, Scorned, I really wanted it with Anna Lynn McCord and Billy Zane mm -hmm. um, and Viva Bianca from Game of Thrones. Um we wanted it to be like misery with young people okay. and name the character Sadie. And she goes off her medicine and goes mm. crazy and like 
you know, kills everybody. <laughs> um, spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, but I didn't, I, it ended up getting all this money from Anchor Bay. Mm. So it became like Writer's Guild, yeah. which is cool. I made it, you know, a big chunk of money. That was like a big deal. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm walking away with half of sixty thousand dollars plus back in, you know. Yeah. And it's for a movie that's a couple million dollars. But I was like devastated I couldn't act in it. I have yeah. a small like cameo in it because they needed a big name. And this is before I even had my first film released. Oh, so it all okay. kinda happened at the same time. Um but what was crazy is is Mark Jones who I wrote who I wrote it with, who's also did Leprechaun. He's a great oh, yeah. Leprechaun. Yeah, yeah. And um, Rumpelstiltskin. Oh, and, yeah. We know uh, I love both of those. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Triloquist, if you've seen that. Which I haven't. I, it's this really, it's direct-to-video, but it was mm-hmm. really quirky and kind I'm of weird. So I wanted it to be quirkier. Mm. And Anna Lynn McCord does a really fabulous job. She really does. But like Billy Zane, everyone loves, but we really wanted someone younger. Mm. Yeah. Um, because there was something about yeah. that dynamic. Because it was supposed to be misery with young people. So then it ended up Billy Zane, who's great, but maybe wasn't that excited to do a movie. Yeah. Mm. I mean, he he was excited to do it the way he wanted. Because he's like, oh, it's a $2 million movie. I'm here for three weeks. And so, like, it took me. I had a chip on my shoulder watching that movie. Because yeah. I hated the music they picked. I was like, what the <laughs> and I was really mad at Mark and every time I saw the film I was like yeah but like we named the character bad guy hmm. like on purpose and he's like this bad guy who escaped from prison and I'm watching it and I'm like it looks like we're stupid like it was supposed to be tongue in cheek you know it's supposed oh, to be thundering and right, right. the bad guy escaped from prison and instead you read reviews and the reviews are like this is the worst thing and then there was other people who got it Hmm. You know, yeah. and and really liked the film, and um, but there is that like thing where you're watching it and you go, oh my god! And I had the character saying things. I mean, Mark and I both did, but like Sadie, you flat chested horror, like, <laughs> and I'm watching it, and like that's who I where I was at mm-hmm. the time, and, right? And we wrote it like basically drinking whiskey and saying mean things to each other because <laughs> it was supposed to be this, you know, this woman who's betrayed Anna Limis character is betrayed Mm. by her boyfriend and so she's like goes off the rails and tortures him and it's a little bit of like a sexy torture film like misery (laughs) but then i'm hearing it and i'm like oh my god but and it took a couple years to like watch it and then one one day i watched it on a fluke and i'm like you know what i like this movie right like i'm a fan of like poison ivy and yeah like like sexy dirty thrillers Yes, there's you know? nothing wrong with a good, sexy, dirty thriller. No, I, I like it. <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much formed me. I'm just going to yeah. say that. Wait, The Postman always 90s. rings twice. I was going to say, was Ooh, that, was... that was one of my um, body heat. Oh, body heat. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, like, the first the first and the, the, the original and the second one. In the 90s, there was just like a long, long line of like straight to video, like, you know, like erotic thriller. But Those are my favorite. But there's some really good stuff in yeah. there, right? Oh man, the name escapes me, but there was one with uh, William Cat, Naked Obsession. Naked, okay. Naked Obsession. I feel like I could yeah. see the bot. Yeah, Tarantino it, was a fan of it. I actually what was like, the one read in... him talking about it once, and I was like, oh, I know that movie. Um, you, you know, Poison yeah. Ivy and mm-hmm. um, the other one with Christina Applegate that's by the same director, they just showed it at the Beverly Cinema. And I couldn't get in. The line was down the block. Oh my God. And I'm like this. I go, people love those movies. They were titillating. Yeah. And they also were really cool parts for women. That's if true. You want to say, like, oh, well, you know, these are all sexy and women's boobs and they're all about sex. No, they were like complex characters mm-hmm. where the women got to really mix it up. And they were normally driving. The were violence, fun. yeah, and the story, yeah, and the story. story yeah. It was like an exaggerated, you know, risque or lifetime movie. I mean, that's all. Yeah, the lifetime. well, I feel like yeah, it had exactly. a built-in audience. You had a, a women's audience that would come to that type of movie, and then you had a male audience that you know was going to come to that movie just to see boobs. Yeah. I mean, literally, so like why, initially. Why do you think we don't get that anymore? Is that just like the prudent, uh, pur- puritanical nature of like our society now? I, it's like we're really. It's like. You don't see much. Uh, 
That's eroticism. almost more. Yeah, that's almost American more cinema. European. It's more. Uh, European I'm doing an now. erotic movie, sort of. I, I I shouldn't say that. It's a sexy thriller okay. in Italy in um, June. Okay. okay. Um, with Silvio Nacci. <laughs> I'm saying his name wrong, um, but um, <laughs> I'm excited about that. It's a little bit like a hard candy oh, type nice. movie. You know, the girl's wronged and she goes a little insane and dirty to teach this guy a lesson. Um, I don't know. It's sort of like when Fifty Shades of Grey came out. Mm. This is this is what I would like to understand. Fifty Shades of Grey comes out, becomes this humongous hit, like beyond, beyond, beyond. They even base the older movie about like book club off of Fifty Shades. Right. Three series. It's not even done that well, even though I loved it. Yeah. But because I because I like shit like that, and then they cancel the Cinemax movies. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think there's this thing of like, I actually was pitching an erotic uh, TV show to Playboy. And I kept saying to them, to the president of Playboy, I'm sitting in the office and um, this is years back. And I'm like, well, half of your audience could be women. And they're like, oh, women won't watch Playboy. And I'm like, yeah, we will. And it, I think it just takes one person to go yeah this sounds good and go for it um i i do think that there's a bit of like people get really confused of what's wrong and right Mm. yeah well we're definitely in one of those periods yeah we're (laughs) in like like you can't say any like i and i have such like i'm so careful on my social media because i actually have a potty mouth and i'm dirty and I'm you know and I can be say outlandish things mm-hmm. but on like social media a lot of times I'm like hey <laughs> yeah you gotta thanks be... guys I love you thank you and I'm like you have to be so generic now yeah it's That's so how bizarre I feel. It and, is, I, yeah. and like I mean you know to me other people's viewpoints are like what is interesting and comedy is to me, I'm like, it's comedy. And people are like, you can't joke about this. You can't. And I'm like, what if we said you could? Hmm. Everyone could diffuse it. Yeah. And I think the same thing with sex. I, like, I did two Cinemax movies and a Playboy I mean, a TV series, just two episodes. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of people be like, wow, that's crazy. You did that. And I'm like, that was the nicest set I went on. Like, <laughs> everyone was really professional. I bet you. <laughs> Really fun, and the sex scene we shot one take. I've done other sex scenes where like you're spending five hours shooting it, and you're like, "Oh my god, that's the worst!" I can't. Yeah, I've I've, yeah. Been, I've ad'd some of those. I try to do them in one. one day. Yeah, you <laughs> like. I'm, I'm like, one take and get it but done. see, as an actress, I'm like this: shoot the shit out of it, so you have my good angles. Yeah, you know, and, right, right, right. And, but like, I would have kept doing the Cinemax movies. They were. Hell of a fun, mm-hmm. except everyone was like, you better stop or that's all you're going to be doing. Mm, so I yeah. did the two. The one was Barry, thank God. I was way too skinny and didn't look right in it. <laughs> the second one, I looked better. And then they played it around the clock. Like, they played the hell out of it. <laughs> and then my IMDb went really high, which was great. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, everybody I know has seen it. <laughs> like I'll go well did you watch my you know did you watch this other film I have out no I just happened to be flipping the channels I'm like you weren't <laughs> flipping like no one has happened to flip the channels but every time it plays it's like ding 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 so people watch them yeah I don't know like we should make some <laughs> like, yeah yeah totally I, I have a, that's that's kind of like I have this this gut instinct that that's there's still a big audience for that I think so and if you use the word sexy thriller, yeah, that 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 think, that might that might get it through. Yeah, that I mean, like you be through. honest. Where this is like a nod to the '90s. So I mean, like what deadly things? What was the one with? Um, I, I really like the indie ones though. Like Lady yeah. in White was very sexy. Do you mm. remember that? I don't remember. I think really it was kind that. of was... scary because she was like. Half naked and there's this little oh, yeah, boy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know which yeah. one I'm talking mm-hmm. about. You must have watched more of those than me. Dude, I, I, <laughs> I mean, in the '90s, I was watching. If it came out in any kind of wide release, straight to video, I saw it. Like I saw everything. I staked out in the video store every Tuesday, and I would. What get was the your new video things. store? Like mine was Video well, Depot. Um, well, I started with uh, something called. You know, I was in Indiana, so it was oh, called. Okay. It was called like the uh, Video Stop. 
That was my the first video one. Stop. And then my second one was there was this awesome place called Delmar Video, and it was like it was warehouse sized, mm. and it was all wow. rentals. I mean. I, it, it was. I loved that place. So sad. Like, yeah. Blockbuster. I, I have. I, I, did, I used to Odyssey. Like a Odyssey just closed. Yeah. Odyssey, that huge oh, Odyssey, Odyssey just closed. closed. Oh. And then you had the other. Yeah, there's been some really big, great video stores that are now gone. Mm-hmm. I. You know, when you flip through, it's really weird. It's it like, I tried to actually find The Wizard of Oz, mm. and I'm like. Oh, like streaming somewhere. Yeah, well, like, no, like, oh, is it on Netflix? Is it on Hulu? Oh, right. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And I was, this was a while ago, so I don't know who has it now, but, or even like old films in the 80s that you liked. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's really hard to find. And most of the time, I'll tell you, we'll be, my boyfriend and I will be going through and we're like, okay, what do you want to watch? And then we just go, forget it. It's 45 minutes later. <laughs> There's something about holding the box at Blockbuster. Mm-hmm. And it and it also, like, things being on the shelf and the old yeah. movies. It's It was a it was an experience. And it's more of a commitment, too. Yeah. you gotta, you got to say, commi- oh, admit, that's so it's true. like you go to the store. So it's if, like if you go to something. a store, pick something out, take it home, you're going to watch, watch it. You're more, yeah, and if like you don't watch it, you'll be you, there'll yeah. be a reason why you didn't watch it. You know, you're it must not if, yeah, be fruitful, though. Yeah. I, our Blockbuster, like, just on the late fees alone. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it closed. Yeah, I just mean, people's late fees. Yeah. I, I remember, <clears throat> like, you would get charged in VCR when you didn't, like, rewind it. Mm-hmm. My mom would be like, you can't, like, that's it. <laughs> and you get, I, I'm kind of surprised Odyssey video closed only because so many people still missed Blockbuster. Yeah, and there's also that other brand that, that closed that was like kind of like used Moby Disc. There's one in Santa Monica, oh, but there was one, one in over Orange here. County. Too. Yeah, they were a lot. There were a lot of those. There was one on Ventura, I think, that closed, and yeah. I think the one. I think probably the only one left is the one. There was one on the west side, and there was one there. And I used they to go required and sell so much them. space. I think they that did, was yeah. the thing. And those were smaller, actually. Those the Moby Displays were not not huge. They were very. Sp- Selective and specific. Right. Well, know? Redbox is kind of, is cool. Yeah, yeah, um, and they're selective on some level. I, I pick it. Yeah, more selective. I actually, yeah. you know, I've had a couple movies when it's in Redbox, and like, I'm like, well, I guess that's my thrill level of, yeah, you know, it, you know, people are watching it because it's a real like curated. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I did see this one box. Oh, I was traveling. I don't remember, but it mm-hmm. was like curated classic movies mm. next to a red box. Oh, wow. And I thought it was going to catch on. So I don't know if that was just individual. Was I in Portland? I must have been in Portland. Well, so one of like the... Yeah. Austin or Portland it thing. Does. One of the best <laughs> companies ever, Criterion, is starting a streaming service. That was announced the other day. Mm. So the Criterion streaming, like you may not ever want to go to the store again because you'll be able to see, I mean, the, the European... Uh, the quality of Criterion yeah. collection is just really that. Good. That is one where I'm excited to actually. I will order that. Yeah, <laughs> I will actually have. I don't need Hulu, but I will need Criterion. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot. Like that's the one thing is sometimes when you're going through, you're like you're flipping through the movies, and I go, there's there's nothing like some of these I wouldn't have if they were if they were much if they were much more I'm gonna have to start making decisions about the I mean you have Amazon Prime most of us because we already kind of have that right right you're already paid for something it kind of they make it easy to have Amazon so you're probably yeah. gonna have that one yeah so then then you got to make a choice to have Netflix right you got to make it that choice and say I want their yeah. stuff and how many times are you going through that stuff and you're going it's a lot of it and they're getting a lot of old Stuff that you could see a lot of places is too. Yeah, their TV mm. series are the only thing that. Yeah, it, me too. It, it, great. Yeah. Once you binge it, you're like, "Why well, mm. I have Netflix?" And then you're done. Yeah, yeah. then you're done. Well, now they're doing those TV movies mm-hmm. again through Netflix. Yeah, which are oddly some good. of them are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're oddly like, I mean, I actually like I I watch way too many bad horror films. Yeah, like, me ones too. that I watch that I have to go to that are my friends or. Yep. Or maybe even one time. <laughs> Sometimes. It's not my fault. I don't know. Yeah. But um, there's something oddly like addicting about them. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's almost like we're going so retro, and we don't really like. Do I ever need to see a movie with Jennifer Aniston again? I don't think so. Like, it's not that I don't like her. Yeah. It's just I'm like I kind of. Sometimes I'll want to watch a movie just because I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. 
Like, there's no yeah. way. Right. Yeah, you read you read some of them, especially yeah. now that you know. Then that's why I like Amazon better, is because the descriptions are a little bit more realistic. You still have the reviews, so you can get a better sense of it. Netflix, you're just going in blind. Yeah. Basically, it's what they say. <laughs> it's yeah. not necessarily giving us any any outside feeling about it. So you're like, I'm a little less likely to experiment on Netflix than I am oh, to then experiment you are on, on, on Amazon. Because when I know it's bad, I know it's bad on yeah. Amazon. Like, I can read. You can go, oh, my God, this is Do you whatever. know anything about, like, the, okay, so Orchard, mm-hmm. um, Orchard on YouTube, mm. they're a company, and they bought, like, the first horror film I did, House of Bad, right? Mm-hmm. And they stream it for free. I think they put advertisements in it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. But, like, it's the only time I've ever, and I don't know if it's just because it's Orchard, and it, we're getting, I couldn't figure it out. But, like, the one problem when you do horror films mm-hmm. is people, or or indie films. Right. You get so many bad reviews of people that you're like, you didn't even watch the movie. Or they would, they're, they don't even know what they're watching. It's like they're on a they're different just like, planet. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I, I'm going to kill myself. I just watched two minutes of this movie and had to shut it off. And you're like, what? Because you're going to kill yourself. Yeah, That's like, why? why? Yeah, why? <laughs> but this, people are surprisingly very kind hmm. and grateful, maybe because it's free. But I was reading it. I mean, not that the film isn't good. I'm very proud of the film. It's mm-hmm. a great indie film. But it seems, it's called or- Orchid. Mm-hmm. Orchard. Orchard. Is it Orchard? I think or- it's yeah. Orchard. Orchard. Or maybe orchard. it is Orchid. It's I don't orchid. remember. Oh, shit. Is oh, it oh, ID or... Well, it's House of Bad and it's on there, but it's free okay. streaming. But There'll it was actually link. like construction, okay. uh, constructive things. You know, mm, every yeah. now and then people are like, the movie was good because there was boobs. Right. You're, <laughs> like, you're like, okay, thanks. <laughs> like, I'm not offended. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but that's the one thing about Amazon is I feel like it's great when people write honest reviews or yeah sometimes i'm like that's why one can get lost like you said earlier like you spend 45 minutes and you've now watched you're like screw it i'm gonna watch nothing because you've read like you're researching or reading or you get caught up in just looking what's there looking at pictures (laughs) well that's what i do and i i don't know like it drives me nuts and for a while i was like they should open up mini blockbuster videos like whoever, mm. and and do some kind of way where you still hold it, but you like cycle through. I don't know. I Almost just, like I a want pop up, <laughs> back. a pop up experience. Yeah, I don't so, know. Put some beer in it. So, what was that first part that kind of that you you mentioned? You were thirty ish. Yeah. And you you booked this part, and you finally, and it was like it seemed like that was a helping to turn a corner, right. or or for you even mentally turning a corner. Take um, us back to that a little bit. You know what happened? This is just the honest truth. Is um, and my acting coach, the and other acting coach I have, Tom and Tom Ormany and Maria Gobetti at the Victory Theater. They say they didn't say this, but they did. But they had suggested that I do nudity, like say that it's okay to do nudity on film. And something was changing right sure. about the time I turned. Here's is that my phone? Yes. Oh, I think so. That's, that's, right. that's, that's your... Uh... Is that me? I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Damn the torpedoes. Sorry. That's it. Pick- how we picked up damn the torpedoes, we'll um, never know. I don't know why it's... Sorry. My no ringer's off. Um, so what happened was at that time, all of a sudden, because of cable, there became nudity on everything. Hmm. I mean, you can't really look at breakdowns without nudity. And... For me, I, it wasn't really a sense of me being modest. Mm. It was because I'm not a very modest person. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was also, I was like, well, I don't think my body is good enough. Like, why would I do that? But that's where, like, you know, I have this voice. Yeah. I'm not an ingenue. Mm-hmm. So I was, like, auditioning for ingenue parts and not getting, you know. And then um, they said, hey, if you... If you go ahead and say that you're willing to do some form of nudity, the girls at the time that are doing nudity are really bad because mm, yeah. it hadn't really switched oh, over. Got it. Yeah. So they. So yeah. I, yeah, I was changing my pool. Mm. It was like a dirty trick. Yeah. So I was like, because I just wasn't getting in the door for auditions, but I was booking like every UCLA film I went out for. I would book every right. USC. I would book, and so I was building up a reel, but it was a reel filled with. Like doing Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mm, right. Like I can't have that on my reel. So I was getting more confident as an actor, but I was like, I need to get paid for 
now I'm ready to move on to indie films. And um, I did a short called, I think it was called A Day in the Life. And it was about this couple that was toxic and just very bad for each other, but they couldn't get away. And it was kind of like one night of, you know, them being, her being a, um, a drug addict of sorts and really going at it with my friend Matt Jackson. A druggie and who's Matt afraid James. of Virginia Woolf. What's he going by? <laughs> Matt James. So, yeah, it was very much like that. And, um, and uh, what's so funny is it was a short and actually got picked up financing for a feature. Wow, so, great. Um, Dylan Reynolds directed it. And um, it was about this guy's it was a, a romantic comedy dark 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 about a guy's looking for love in like the dirty parts of la and had a great soundtrack and had tits in it mm. but, you know mostly mine i was the girl who came in harmony and um who came in and like whisked into his life and when it was done we kept joke we called it to be funny nipples and palm trees <laughs> Which, at the time everyone was like don't do that because mm -hmm. the the movie actually has some real heart to it mm -hmm. and it's really like it's it's i love it i still love it to mm -hmm. this day and when people have seen it they're like why'd you guys name it that it's so much better than that mm -hmm. well it stayed in the top 100 on itunes for a by, year by being called that that's they're how being called people Nibbles actually saw trees. the movie <laughs> people saw it and yeah. that was the first time i went to a movie theater and like they played it on opening night and like I couldn't drink because my adrenaline was so high because that was such a big deal. I was like, I'm at, you know, this AM, or it was the the Lomley, the Lomley. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. In North Lomley, Hollywood. Lomley, yeah, I think. Lomley. 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 <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And we were playing the same night where our after party and our distributor, Cinema Epoch, was um, Daryl Hannah's movie was playing the same night. Oh, wow. And we outsold her. Um, <laughs> mostly because I literally went and flyered for this movie. Mm. Like, oh, wow. I was so – not only did I flyer, being the mom of the year, I had my son – come fly her <laughs> with me and be like you need to see this movie my mom's in it i was so proud of it like oh that's great. i mean yeah. you know like i i'm not really someone who like goes oh i wish i had so-and-so's career i'm like i can't believe i got to do what i wanted to do like, yeah like yeah i wish i had more money that would be really great. I think a lot of us feel that way. <laughs> you know, at least if we have right. some, if we have some money, we, we feel like we're doing all right. But right. it'd be nice to have more money. Yeah, yeah it's think, nice to have money. Well, yeah. yeah, and nice sometimes you know, I I'm like, well, if like I hope this film does really well, so I can do another one. But that to me was like the whole time I kept thinking like, oh, this is what you wanted so badly, and it happened. And then after that, I had done another film, House of Bad. That also, um, I think it had a little bit of a limited theatrical, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they, they do that to see. Mm -hmm. And then it comes out on video, and you, you're like, I'm at Walmart. Yeah. Like, I'm at Walmart crying. You know, <laughs> like, maybe I'm, I'm a little bit too much. But, like, that's at the beginning mm -hmm. where you're like, I, I can't even believe this ever happened to me. And then yeah. later on, you're like, oh, my God, the movie's at Walmart. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, yeah. I mean, not all movies do you want them to be out. You're like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm just is. not going to see that. But um, so it was kind of weird because it was like at the same time that Scorn had sold as a screenwriter and then I had three films come out in the same year and I booked something else um, Chavez with like Danny Trejo and, and yeah. Stephen Bauer and it's like you know there's a tremendous sense of like well at least I'm in like the game mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you go from like no one gives a shit about like your post on you know I'm not great at social media mm -hmm. I have a presence but I don't have like 20,000 followers or a hundred or a million. Mm -hmm. But like I, you can go back through, you know, when they show you on Facebook, like five years ago yes. yeah. and I'm like, Oh yeah. Like I used to post on Facebook and I get like four comments. Yeah. Now it's kind of funny. Cause I'll have somebody like in India that's like, I love you so much. And I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And I'm yeah. so grateful for it. But I'm like, wow, I guess that ha like that, that happened. Yeah. Like now I, I post and people are like, I'm your biggest fan. And I'm like, wow, you're in New Zealand. And like this person wrote me. Hmm. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's, 
Like that to me is like, I mean, sometimes I'm I'm a little bit weirded out because it's not the same. It's not like I go to Seven Eleven and someone's like Sadie Katz. But every <laughs> now and then, someone will be like, "Hey," and I'm I'm freaked out. I'm like, I gotta get out of here because it's not like <laughs> it's not enough to happen on a regular basis. And then I think like they see me have sex with one leg, like with blood coming <laughs> down. Like, like I don't think I thought of it that way. <laughs> like, right. Probably not. But then, yeah. how, how did that get so? Through that, and you, you certainly have done a lot in that. But then, yeah. you know, the Bill Murray experience is well, such an interesting that's and open. Did, right? yeah. That's yeah, what I did to do to kind of counterbalance because, you know, when you do horror films, this is one thing you have such a great, amazing audience. Mm. Like, you really do. Yeah. So then you're like, loyal. they're loyal, and then people are like, you're a scream queen. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm, if I'm that, but I'll hashtag the fuck out of it. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, like, I really was a fan of, like, Morgan Spurlock-type mm-hmm. docs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I and I loved this one called, um, you know, My Date with Drew, where he tries to get a date with Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Yeah. And he made, like, a million bucks, or that's urban legend. Mm-hmm. But it got a theatrical one. They made it for, like, 10 grand with a video camera. And I really, really wanted to make a documentary and wanted to do a comedy. Mm. And I want, I was like, I wanted to do something kind of pure Mm -hmm. and good not that i'm putting down the other movies but i was like wow i'm like you know i'm i'm like murdering people and raping people (laughs) (laughs) you wanted to put like a and i i I hesitate to use the word positive because there there are many positive aspects to horror movie but you wanted to do something nice yeah and i also i i was like i almost wanted to change where you know, with doing the Bill Murray experience, I, I thought if I if I do that and I'm successful, I mean, like, I thought I was going to make a million bucks. Like, I think in order to start a film, you have to think you're gonna, you and you have, have to, to believe think, it all the way through. You do. And now it kind of sucks because now I, I understand it. Like, mm-hmm. I learned so much from it that every time I'm like, we should do that. Like all that that little girl energy goes, oh, my God, do you know, like, I, do we really want to do that? And I just did, you know, Circus Road. And in the middle of filming, I was like, you knew better. Like, no, you, no, no. <laughs> you know how this is. But um, I also just, like, I, I, I'm a real fan of, like, the tipping point mm-hmm. and following trends. And I had, this is so unrelated in a silly way, but I had um, figured out, I had found the e-cigarettes when they first came out Mm -hmm. square the disposable ones Mm -hmm. at the liquor store and i was like this is going to be the biggest thing yeah the first time i ever saw it so i drove to the factory and was like and i found out where the factory was knocked on the door and was like give me some of these i want to see you know i want i'm going on a cruise and i want to see if i could sell them on the cruise Mm -hmm. And then at the time, I was trying to get this guy that I was dating. I was like, I just discovered something that we're going to make tons of money off. I'm going to go to every liquor store in Woodland Hills. And I didn't do it Hmm. because he was like, that's ridiculous. And then six months later. It's everywhere. (laughs) And I was like, God damn it. I was right at the beginning of that. And then (laughs) something else, um, Dry Bar. When Dry Bar first came out, Mm. the very first location, I was like, holy shit. My hair is amazing. <laughs> I, I need to buy a location. Like, I was going up to people. And so, yeah, there was a little bit of, like, I was like, Bill Murray. Everyone wants to meet Bill Murray. Mm. Yeah. And so, at first, it was a little bit, like, like I was like, oh, my God. I'm fucking genius. <laughs> I'm going to do the one film that self-advertises. So, every single time someone says Bill Murray experience, that movie's going to sound familiar. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so I was like, I figured out, like, because that's the one thing when you have a film, you have to have all the money for PA to yeah. really make it. And it's so difficult. I was like, oh, I'm going to make this movie. It's going to be the easiest, funnest thing in the world. And I'm going to smoke pot and go chase Bill Murray. And then, and then, you know, I didn't know how to make a film yet. <laughs> and so then I was like, oh, that's, that's what I'm learning. And then, um, you know, it, it, then it, it like became a really weird thing because then because my life was going so crazy, mm-hmm. which I would never like I learned so much from this. Yeah. I was like, if Bill Murray is in my movie, 
Like, I'm set. I'm going to make all this money. Everyone's going to be, like, successful. And this is going to be, like, I, I fucking figured it out. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to find the unicorn. And it's going to, like, set my career up. And this is great. Mm-hmm. And I really thought that. And so it, it became not only about getting Bill Murray and being, like, fascinated by Bill Murray and kind of amping myself up. Mm-hmm. But I was also like, oh, my God, I'll get to pick movies. Like, Oh, you went down problems. the fantasy trail. Yes. Oh, I was. Oh, <laughs> You're it's off like, to it, the races. It, Open the doors. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, when you lose that fantasy <laughs> is when you're doing deliverables. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and you're like. Oh shit! Yeah, you know, I mean, you edit your movie, and and that was a whole thing of finding the right editor, and thank God for Jim Towns because he's yeah, amazing. It's a nice, it's a really nice edit. I I like, oh, I thanks. enjoyed the movie. Oh, I'm like, so glad. No, and I did too. I, I you know, and I'm glad, I'm glad to find like because I found it as the, the humor approaches like you have to be attuned to it. Like, yeah. and if you're not, some people are just so. They just don't get it. I could see people yeah. not getting it. The it thing odd. that the thing I took away the most from it was, you know, and it, I, you know, it's it sounds like a you know a trope or a cliche to say life's the journey, not yeah, the destination, yeah. but it, like it really rung true in that. Like, it, like I had fun the entire time, and it wasn't about like, am I going to succeed? I, right. you know, I it didn't matter to me at the end. Of course, I would have liked to have seen you sure. sat down with him, but at the same time, like, that didn't matter to me. It was like the journey and following this person through the journey. It was I uniquely was cool. honest and almost that curb your enthusiasm almost makes you uncomfortable sometimes away, but yeah. I also yeah. but I also binge watch, so I'm also one of those people yeah. who liked that, and so that approach, that exposure and honesty Well, Jim level. Towns and I were watching mm. it, like, we're editing it, mm-hmm. so, and we're going, like, you know, I'm watching myself in a really hard part of my life mm-hmm. where I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm on somebody else's set. Like, I had already been shooting that day with, with like, a movie with Danny Trejo, a B movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm on, you know, Bill Murray's set. And so, like, inside, I'm, I'm kind of humiliated because I'm like, I'm like this, to them, I'm this, like, weird super fan. Mm-hmm. But, like... So watching the footage, I'm like, oh, I'm so manic there because I'm like, this is going to happen. I can't yeah. believe this is happening. And the stakes were so high because I didn't get anybody like people I didn't know very well were like, you're so cool. Good luck. But like people in my camp mm-hmm. who could have been on my team were like, you're crazy. This is a stupid idea. And you're making a fool of yourself. So That's when we're horrible. watching, yeah, it was, Sorry. <laughs> it was so bizarre. It was like so bizarre. And, um, the person who gave me the, the, the money for, for it, which he ended up having a complete change of heart when he saw the film, mm-hmm. Jim Griffiths. But as I was shoot, as we were shooting it, he was like, stop talking about Bill Murray. And I'm like, the only way to do this is this is that's what it's that's what it is so (laughs) it was like the my stakes were so high because i wanted it to to be great and sometimes i'm like that crazy person when i need something like you're like are you okay and so when we're editing it i'm saying to jim towns like i'm like i look like a crazy person like and then we just kind of looked at each other and said well you were crazy. Like, and I said, yeah, but what's this mean for my acting? Like, what's going to happen for my acting? And he's like, look, we either show it or we don't. Yeah. So we're like, fuck it. So it's so funny when I've gotten a lot of beautiful letters mm-hmm. and people writing me out of the blue mm-hmm. that the movie meant something to them. And then every now and then I'll run across a, a you know, a review or somebody on Amazon who writes yeah. like, this is the most self-indulgent person. I'm like, you didn't watch the whole movie. Yeah. Cause like at a certain point in the movie, like things turn. I think the first act, because the, the camera's shaky and stuff and it, we're a little like Instagrammy. Mm. And so a couple of people, I think that had some complaints about it. were like, you know, Hollywood reporter, this director, I mean, this um, reviewer was supposed to review it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I turned it off after 10 minutes. Not my thing. I'm not going to review it. And I was like, I said, well, you know, the thing is I become a filmmaker and I I actually lose a lot because of not taking it seriously. Right. Yeah. So. 
but you you see that that I, honestly, I think that's what's so brilliant about it is that it. I'm sad, I hate, I don't use that term very loosely, but the fact that you see an evolution, you like the it becomes a movie as it's going. Right. Yeah. You become a filmmaker as it's going. Right. Yeah. It's it's almost like you you come to the realization of what the theme is. Has it's going right? You know? Well, I was like, I, I, I we recommend. had all the footage, and I went like the first round of footage was with my girlfriends. They quit doing it, yeah. and you know we're watching the footage, and I'm like, I I'm starting to learn like, oh wait, I wanted to when I first started doing the talk, mm -hmm. I thought we were gonna look for Bill Murray, and the thing was, my friends all were gonna have a new, we all had a New Year's resolution, mm. so when we first started doing it. It wasn't only going to be on me. It was uh, supposed to be my girlfriend. Like, my one girlfriend wanted to be a stand-up comic. My other girlfriend um, wanted to publish an erotic poetry book. Mm. Um, the other one was moving out for the first time and was learning from her boyfriend. Right. So it wasn't just Sadie looking for Bill Murray. But when we had the footage, it you know, and the girls didn't want to really be involved anymore, we also realized that the story was really Bill Murray and and I was willing to be kind of ridiculous and they were still very protective mm -hmm. and not a slag on them but they were sort of like oh Sadie's paying us money to hang out and this is cool yeah and um so then and and at the time I mean I was just absolutely obsessed with Bill Murray mm. like yeah like and it was weird too because like there's, a, you know, if you ever go to an L.A. party, what's so funny is you'll never meet more people who, like, believe in fortune telling, <laughs> who believe in horoscopes. Like, we're so clinging on to fucking everything mm -hmm. that, like, yeah. we're, like, getting our tea leaves. We're like, oh, just tell me I'm going to have my cartoons going to be the biggest hit. How many times have you been asked to, she's going to do your chart? That's the first thing, man. Mm -hmm. Literally, yeah. oh, my friend's got to do your chart before we start dating. And I'm like, okay. But people <laughs> don't understand, like, why. And it's because, like, all you do is hope and L.A. Yeah. So, like, I I was, like, you know, just seeing, I was, like, maybe this is a bad, like, sincerely, maybe I, I, I don't have something, and then I would see someone with a Bill Murray shirt on, and, like, it's got to be a sign, you know? And maybe that, like, it took me a while because I wanted it to be just this knock-out-of-the-park hit, mm. but... It actually, like, it did really well at film festivals. I had people really upset. Like, they were upset at Bill Murray. Mm. Like, come up to me and, like, you know, um, I'll still have people, like, contact me as if I have this in. Um, the fact that I, you know, I got distributed by Gravitas was, like, a, a big win. Yeah. For me. I won't say that it was ultimately a big win because um, there was a lot of heartache in, in that. Yeah. You know, you there's a lot I, I didn't know. Hmm. You're like, oh, this one's getting picked up. I'm going to turn on the, the TV. I'm going to go to documentaries. And my doc is going to be right there on the scroll. And, like, I tasted that for six months. Hmm. And, like, I dreamt about it. And then I wake up in the morning. I go run to the TV. And I'm like, why isn't it on the scroll? Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And it never, like, duh. <laughs> now it occurs to me. Well, yeah, it's not on the scroll. And I'm like, well, how are people going to find my movie? Oh, I have to advertise for my movie? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> endlessly? <laughs> and so, it, like, with indie filmmaking, I think that's the difference of doing, like, a horror film. It, it, it can get on the scroll. Yeah. You know, meaning when I've... you're going through and it's on the top thing. And then my biggest thing was I was like, oh, well... It's so brilliant. Anytime someone Googles Bill Murray, my mm. doc will come up. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You had to put in the Bill Murray experience. So I was like, uh, oh, shit. Yeah, a, you'd have to be called, it would have to call Bill Murray experience. You have to have a distributor who's yeah. so, you have to have a distributor who's really backs you. And Gravitas used to be a boutique yes. distributor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so oh when I signed up for them, was literally I was the last film that the old, you know, owners of Gravitas purchased. Okay. Like they said we're gonna purchase it. They liked the film. They watched it. Right. Um, 
I, I had a screening at UCLA that was sold out and everyone really loved it. So it was, it was maybe one of the best nights I had in my, and you know, just feeling really like, okay, I did this for a reason. But then the new owners of Gravitas came out and they're the number one indie movie distributor and they have thousands of titles. So I was very angry with them because I was like, we dumped in all this money. Yeah. Like we did a director's commentary. We did DVD extras. None of and us there. They didn't fucking put them on the yeah. DVD. I've had, that. I've had that happen. And I yeah. had heard that and I had even said like, are you guys sure? So we spent, you know, another four grand. Doing mixing. the extras. Yeah. We did more. Um, gosh, Jim Towns did this wonderful job where he did um, the animation which for for a low budget film, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually, I was impressed with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, had, it, so. it had his own style, mm -hmm. and then we cool. discussed it's, it's design, it, and right. and like you know, the, we actually changed, we added the animation at the very end of the film, mm -hmm. after it had pre-screened at a festival in Hollywood, Florida. Okay, um, I like I saw it. Everyone loved it. It won best documentary, and then I flew home and said. I never had my animation of my Bill Murray story. And I said, <laughs> I, I kept trying to tell people, I'm giving this away, but I kept trying to tell people, no, 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 the whole movie is my Bill Murray experience. Like, that's the trick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people didn't fully get that. They were like, well, what about your Bill Murray? Like, are you still going to try to find a Bill Murray experience? And I was like, that was it. No, that the was movie it. was the experience. Yeah, that was Don't it. you get it? So, that's, so then we ended up, I called Jim Towns up. He's so sweet. So I called Jim up and I'm like, I'm like, babe, I want you to do this weird thing where we see everything and it flashes back and we play back, you know, the balloons and losing my girlfriend and losing my hearing. And that's a cartoon at the end. And he goes, what? Because <coughs> the original thing, I'm kind of like crying, saying, hey, I'm still here. Right. I said, no, no, no. We can't end it like that. <coughs> it's true, but <laughs> it's true, but. Like, I, I was like, we absolutely have to do that reverse animation. Yeah. And I said, will you trust me? And I love him so much because he did. And then he sent me it and he goes, I think you're right. Like, I think this is really good. And I watched it and I just like, you know, I like cried my eyes out. And it's so sad. It's, 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 the one thing about being in L.A. is like, it's so sad because... You want everything to be like a run, a runaway hit instead yeah. of like a um, sort of a second base or yeah, know. like you're like oh I, I like this is this is it, <coughs> and you know my next doc I wanted to do another documentary which I still want to do mm -hmm. um, called Girl Girl Makes a Film about me same kind of thing about me trying to fundraise, mm. get money, get financing for my <laughs> film, and slowly have the elements drop into place. Mm. Like I get my first amount of money and then the camera changes and we have lighting. Right. You know, the sound is kind of bad at the big for the first five minutes and then the sound comes in. Um, only because like a very meta film. Yeah. So when, you know, I'm I'm meeting with people and they go, well, what what's the film? This is we're in it. That is the, <laughs> we <laughs> are making if the film. If you give me five thousand dollars, <laughs> I'll have, you know, this actor and then all of a sudden we have, you know, whoever. Billy Zane, Danny Trey, come in for the day. Billy right. Zane won't like me now, but I was saying, you know, <laughs> we have some kind of actor that's a little bit higher who all of a sudden is part of the film. You know, like, <laughs> thank you that because we got this money. But it's really hard to want to do to do that because it's such a tricky equation. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've probably spent some time and see you jumped into my question, which was going to be what was going to be next. Oh, you you do great. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 you're perfect. Right, we Sean, don't have to be. Go. We could leave. Just Sean interview yourself. <laughs> see you later. No, <laughs> no. But what so what are you planning on doing? Yes, obviously you're still acting. Well, I, I'm writing something like I'm writing a pilot for okay. someone right now. Um, who Rob Angelino, who's the owner of Beauty TV, and um, so I'm I'm doing that, and I'm I'm also have some acting projects. Um, Thomas Churchill, I'm doing Big Effing Rat for him, mm. which is like classic B script. It's very funny. It's, yeah. it's a giant rat. Um, <laughs> which why would you not watch that? I mean, I'm I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I love creatures. Like creature, mm. I mean, it's, it, I read the script. I went, this is ridiculous. Like, sign me up. Let's do it. <laughs> um, 
I really would love to make another doc. Mm -hmm. um, I I think I, I kind of the last the Circus Road film. It occurred to me that like maybe I do want to direct. Mm -hmm. Like um, I'm really. I'm really, I understand what an art form that is. Mm. You know, I've directed theater, but I do understand, like, it's kind of annoying when people are like, oh, I'm going to direct. <laughs> You're like, good fucking luck. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm like, oh, that would be something that, like, logically makes sense. And a lot of people have been like, why aren't you directing it? it it's really weird because acting's like this hungry baby that that you're like okay I'm going to drop you off at the babysitter I'm going to go out and then you're thinking about the baby all the time yeah. you know and like so I, I'm always like yeah and, and I'm afraid if I stop acting I'll just get really fat I'll just eat <laughs> I'll eat and drink like it, the only thing that keeps my weight not from ballooning is the fact that I <laughs> Just, just hey, it's it's a regiment. I would mean, literally like, yeah, I mean, literally, it's a health regiment. I would be to like, start pizza, acting. Be like, it, you know, because it makes you like conscious of, oh, I gotta be on camera. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think I have these things come up, and there's, it, it's. I would have loved to continue doing documentaries, and and that that would be something really fun for me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just, it's a tricky world. And I know some documentary filmmakers, and I just I like I like slice of life docs. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm done with that yet. I just think it's like you're waiting for that. The right slice of life. The right slice, yeah, like yeah. that inner. And and I don't know if maybe I'm like, maybe I'm not. Um, I'm meeting with someone Monday. Um, this wonderful woman who is uh, is dating with HIV mm -hmm. and she wants to get married and have a baby and she's talked about adopting and stuff. So I started to think maybe, and she has a really sassy, fabulous like way of looking at life. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, maybe I don't need to be the the lead in the doc. Because yeah. that's really hard. I, I, I yeah. think that, that was really difficult because it, you're juggling something and I was new and you know um but i it, it humbled me a lot to learn yeah like you know right. you do it's like i was done with film school like I, I at the end of four years i was like oh i had like you know insurance like right. why like <laughs> why do i have to have that you know? what is that didn't i already have insurance yeah it's like fair usage <laughs> yeah, like I, I learned a lot of yeah. things that i like <clears throat> I'm really grateful for it because it made me kind of have like a, a real nice base knowledge and also to know, oh, I could have gone and used way more clips of Bill Murray. I could have supported yeah. this. I, but I was very, it's so funny how many people were like, you know, you can't do it. He's going to block your movie. And I'm like, what? It's really, you just got to do it. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. so I don't know. And then I'm like everybody else. I'm like, oh, I should do a podcast. But all those things are like so hard <laughs> <laughs> because you have to commit to it. Yeah. You do. That's yeah, the you one do. thing. You, you got to commit to something. You can't do everything and not you've got to commit to yeah. a couple things at least. Well, I, I, what I find we've, we've talked with this, uh, talked about this with a lot of the guests on here is, you know, in this day and age, it's like we can't do one thing anymore. You know, I, I always just wanted to direct. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I I soon realized the, how expensive it was to actually pay for good scripts. So I learned how to write. And oh, then, really? And now, <coughs> now I like me. writing more than directing, but I you know still direct. And then I realized, okay, I'm making a couple movies a year, but not quite making the money I want to make. So. What am I going to do now? Okay, I'm going to produce some other people's stuff, or I'm going to do this, yeah. or I'm going to do a podcast to network, or you know, whatever. And it's it a lot of work. Like, I think what's really interesting is you think like back in the day, you could like make your indie film, yeah, it play, and you don't have to like. I'm like, you know, two years later, a year later, talking to my girl about like Amanda, who's lovely. Who, um, <laughs> about like did you put up something for instagram yeah i mean and i i didn't nurture like instagram before my film coming out mm. but it is awful intimidating because um everything you do now you're like oh now i gotta do it on social media yeah it's a lot of you become your own pr person 
Yeah. There's like, a lot of there's a lot more I think in it. And thank you so because it's gonna it's a great education because even someone like yourself who's been in so many films to then have to do both, you see that often it's like, oh, there are a few things that are going on that I wasn't aware of or that maybe filmmakers were doing right so that I didn't yeah. have to see those things behind the scenes. Well, you know don't what I mean? you Sometimes. think like, well, it's really funny because like I sometimes my my social media, I'm like, oh, I'm so obnoxious. But I'm <laughs> like, I've I've told other people, I'm like, if you're doing this film and you don't do any press for it and you're not like you know, going on podcasts and, and yeah. then sharing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They'll they'll go on the show and then they won't share it. And yeah. I'm like I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know who you did that for because yeah. if you don't share it, there's no one Who's gonna know about it? No one's gonna know. Like yeah. it's like we're all scratching each other's back and yeah. like yeah. you know, supporting support. it. And it's really kind of interesting because you have to there's a certain obligation that you have to do and you give up a certain like you know you have to look like an asshole on social media like hey i just did this film hey i just did an interview yeah. like hey have you not heard me talk about myself enough right and well you know what i try this is something that i've been coming to the last year what i try to do to combat that is i try to spend equal or greater time self not self-promoting but promoting others so yeah. like I'll be like, hey, my friend just did this, or here's, yeah. and I and I try to make it not sound like a sales pitch. Yeah, but well, it's just share. You know, you're just sharing. Think, stuff. You're supporting yeah, other people. Yeah. I try to be yeah. very like, I don't really understand. Like, it's so funny. I think it tells a lot about a person if you watch them go through their Instagram and they're like, like those likes are so precious to them, and I'm like this, like, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, why are you not liking it? We're in LA. Like, I, why I, are you not liking everything? Yeah. As many things as I can like while I am, you know, sitting in the figure. restroom or whatever. Yeah, I, you know, you're just I kind do of like, I'm yeah. trying to, I'm participating, yeah. I'm supporting. And I'm, especially Instagram is easy sure. because it really, no one's expecting as much, inter much you know, oh, you yeah, can write yeah. something, but it's usually ingenuine anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll see it. And I'm like, I'm always shocked going, and this is the crazy thing. And I'll bust some of my friends. I'll be like, <laughs> You couldn't like my movie. Like, literally, you're an actress. Mm -hmm. We're in the movie together, and you're not li like like they're not even like. It's the like, what's wrong or, yeah. with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think it's <coughs> it's this really bizarre thing that we um we live in like a time where people are. It's like a Black Mirror episode. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of jealousy. I, yeah. Even myself, there's certain actresses that are doing really well that I love. And, um, you know, we're, we were in the same projects. And sometimes I'm like this, like, okay. I'm like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> and, I, and I check myself and I'm like, no, I'm going to like it. I'm going to leave a comment and say you're bitching and like keep it up. Like I'm not in competition with anyone. I'm in competition with myself. Yeah, we're, I think that's what has independent filmmakers we got to come to realize is we're not against each other. We're not fighting for a scrap. It's supposed and to be it, a community. It's Hello. a community. <laughs> and if we support each other, if we share each other's stuff, if we watch each other's stuff, we talk about each other's stuff, like in the same way that we talk about Bird Box. Mm -hmm. Like that, that yeah. drives me nuts. You'll go to a filmmaker's page and it'll be like, you know, Bird Box, this, that, and the nothing about any of their friends or you know. I know isn't that so bizarre yeah. you know there's but, like Joe Quintilla and oh yeah I was he's, gonna, he's such great an he's great advocate of everybody I mean the to the point sometimes where so I like he helps me share other people mm. yeah sometimes I don't do it as much as I ought to because my page I'm like, oh, I post so much. So people are like, this bitch, again, like, yeah. how many times are you going to post in a day? <laughs> you know, but if I do see something really good or, it, like, I try to support other people. And you'll notice sometimes the people that don't, that aren't that active, you'll be like, well, the reason no one likes your stuff is because you don't like anybody else's stuff. Yeah. So it's not that your posts aren't excellent. You just don't interact. And it's you're not using it the way 
it's supposed to be a community. You're in a bu- you're a little yeah. bit in a bubble, and and we all go we can go we through go that. through that. Or yeah. or sometimes people will get defensive about it. They'll they'll want to they'll share somebody's, and then maybe that person doesn't reciprocate. So then the original person is like, well, I'm never doing it again because yeah. they didn't reciprocate. But you can't let but yeah, you got to keep people's moving. habits. Yeah, you like, got to keep it. Moving. The free screening I did at UCLA of my doc, there was a couple hundred people there. There was like almost 300 people and mm-hmm. it was sold out and i was like flabbergasted at the people who showed up yeah. and it was i i had talked about it so much mm-hmm. on like my facebook and i felt i was like i wonder it felt like a funeral actually i was like oh, i feel like <laughs> i'm at my own funeral um but i think one of the things was i had a lot of people come up to me and and I'm not patting myself on the back. It just is like they came up to me and were like, thank you. You've been so encouraging through social media and you mm-hmm. always like respond. And like I was rooting for you. Like I didn't realize how many people were rooting for me to finish the film because they're like, this bitch is never going <laughs> to stop talking about <laughs> doing her film because it took a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And um, that to me was like, like, wow, that was like really in, like an incredible gift. And so I think of that when I go to as many films as I can. Yeah. You know, or someone who I know has been working on something a long time. Um, It's a little bit different. Like right now, there's like films where everyone's like, they're flipping them real fast. They yeah, that's are, that, yeah. that's a different, that's a whole different beast. And but, it's cool, but yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm like... Like, there's certain people, like, I'm like, no, I want to go to that film because that was their baby. Right. This is their real baby. Right. Um, Which people get burnt out on, too, if you promote it. But there's something kind of beautiful. I mean, you know, we were talking about Michael Mahal yeah. doing this this crowdfunding and stuff. What's beautiful is that guy hustles. Like, yeah. Like, he's, he's figured something out. So there's kind of, like, people that, um, you know maybe that you admire mm. just for what they're doing. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we live in this like really weird time. Like of you have to be so good at everything. It's true. Like, so f- right. Yeah. I mean, it's really, I mean, it's just, it's the slash. We are in this last generation. If you're not slashing yeah. it, you're probably not, you're right. probably not collecting a, ch- a check, much less one or two or three, yeah. uh, well, no, which we I, all need. You have point. to. I mean, that's why I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write. I know I can write because I would see some scripts and I would go like, this is it, yeah. you know. And, and and even just watching stuff like movies, I'm like, I'm like, I could have wrote that. Like, why aren't I? I need to write. And so then being like, okay, I need to write. Okay. I need to make my own film and distribute it so I so I can understand the um, distribution principle, which still is very difficult. Yeah, well, and well, it's, it's, a, changing. it's, ever, changing. it's, it's ever changing. It's an ever changing. changing. Well, yeah, AFM, yeah. I, this yeah. is the first year I didn't go, but before, as the years went through at AFM, like... I don't think anyone has the real answer. You're like, they you never sit did. down <laughs> and they're like, I got really lucky. This mm-hmm. distributor didn't burn me. Mm. Um, and then it's really, it's kind of funny because you're like, okay, how is this going to work? How, how does this really work? And maybe you, you just, you, you have the film and you do it. I, you know what yeah. I should have done is I should have had more money for festivals. Like yeah. that, that was like the one thing that you don't realize they fifty dollars a festival. Yeah, you gotta budget yourself for those types of things. Because right. if well, not, you're then, pulling it out of your pocket. You, and then if you actually get in, you then, then you got to fly. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to promote it. And, yeah, and you have to promote. Yeah. It. And there are much. I'm sure there are much fewer fests because I pretty much only did local or ones that would pay for me to go. And I right. know that that's changed. That's like, they, changed. They, like there's so few of them that actually give you accommodations or give you anything. So, yeah. you know, those types of things. So you have to have a budget for that. And then you really should be putting in some some kind of money and for at least the week doing theatrical. Stuff. Well, like. Uh, yeah, like at, so when I got into Amdocs um, in Palm Springs, mm. I was like, you're never going to see somebody promote this film more than me. And so I went down, kept driving down to Palm Springs and handing out balloons. It's oh, the Bill wow. Murray experience. That's great. So, That's I idea. mean, they my balloons and my postcards were everywhere. And then during the actual festival, we were... Um, 
you know, I had talked to Teddy. We were one of the, the, the Teddy's the owner of the festival, um, who really loved the film and really championed it. Um, he, I was like, okay, we're going to do a party on the night of, mm. and you can make a part of it. So then I ended up going down to the V Hotel in Palm Springs wow. and getting them to do it. We got balloons. Because here's the thing at the film festivals, which as an actor, I've flown out yeah. to one. You get there, and I'm all the way in Kansas City to watch a short film that I've already seen. <laughs> and they didn't do anything to, they didn't support the other filmmakers. Like, you have mm -hmm. to be there for a week and go to other filmmakers' films yeah. to make them come to yours. So we're sitting in a theater with, like... By yourself. By ourselves. Yeah. I'm like, why did we, like... Why did we come to Kansas City? Because you actually should be giving away keychains. Yeah. You should be giving away things. So, not um, working at the festival. Yeah. Not working. I went to like so many people's films, and I bought these balloons that you know that were like giant. They spelled out the Bill Murray Experience. That's like twenty five <laughs> feet across. Mm, so we put them up in the tent. So when people showed up, it was like that was the only film. Oh yeah. And we were just like. I was tenacious about, like, literally everyone's like, what is this film? I was flying, I was stickering it. I was going to people's hotels and putting it on their door. And um, you kind of need that. No, you do. Like, you definitely need that. And the thing that I didn't do is keep everyone's name on, like, an email list. Oh, you got to do that. Too. I know. Oh, yeah. You know. You got to maintain your database. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> I know it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. Um it's it's so crazy because it's that's what I'm saying. You have to there's so many different things and it's it's it, it's overwhelming. Like you want it to be great. But now I'm really excited cuz I'm like, okay. The next thing yeah. that I do I know these things and like it, it may take a little bit longer mm -hmm. to commit to jump in, but mm -hmm. I actually come going like this is what happens if you don't do it. You know. And you I, also know what you have a better idea of what you're committing to, which is uh, always gonna mean inform being informed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of times you're committing to I'm going to do this and then it's like, holy crap, as you did say. <laughs> well, like, it's harder <laughs> the older you get. It's yeah. like you know, you, it's like I, my son's 17, and if I have what the eggs I have left, I think about having another baby, and I'm like this. Oh, yeah, but remember when he starts school? Like, remember that? Like, you know, it's the same thing with doing a film, and you're like, you're like, whoa, it's a, it's a long baby. Mm. Like, where is it's a long. It's yeah, they almost stay with you as long as it's. it's they're both about equal yeah. on I some mean, levels. Yeah, I movies I'm still dealing with. Twelve I've, years old. Uh, mine's what sixteen. Mm -hmm. So and you're still doing. Yeah, I'm trying like, to get it re-released again. It's an IP. You own it forever. Which is great. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, I really can't wait until like eight years from now. I'm like, my contract with Gravitas will be done. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, who knows? That might be something that will sell for another reason then maybe i'll do i'll be doing bigger films um obviously i i'm gonna assume more people will know of me because i've continued to work yeah um but yeah it's kind of weird it doesn't go away mm -hmm. it's like it's like bad red carpet pictures they don't go away <laughs> but the good stuff you're like oh i i still own this yeah i, I still like it, it, how's the bad? I, I, that's what was so weird. We did that five years ago, mm. and all of a sudden, Jim Towns, who directed me on that one, who was mm. also became my editor, he called me up and he goes, "You know that we have half a million views. We have like five hundred and sixty-five thousand views." And I go, "What? Like, damn, wh how'd that happen?" He's like, "They re-released it. They sold it to another company, and this company, um, Orchid, or." Damn it. What Orchard. is it? Orchard. Orchard. Orchard <laughs> is showing it. And I'm like, five years later, they're showing, like, people yeah, are watching oh yeah. the film now. And I, I kind of got a kick out of it, like, going through um, people saying they liked the film. And I went, who would have thought, like, that would have happened? Like, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they, they made some money on the film. Yeah. Did well at Walmart and well at Kmart. But you really just want a lot of people to see your film. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So you guys are 
now do you own your film now? Um, my, some. some of them. I'm yeah. getting, I have some rights back and I, one, it's, I think I have another 10 years on waiting. It was a 25 year. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> well, it was. You didn't know what you didn't know? Well, no, that's, glad? that was when they used to take them in perpetuity and we had to fight to get it down to 25. Oh, really? I had, because I paid a lawyer to fight to get it to 25. If not, artisan would still, they would own it in perpetuity. What's the film? Uh, it's called Redemption. It's a, it's Redemption? Old, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. It's, it's a good title because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's used before. Title. It's been used before, but it'll be used again. But yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's what it is. We're trying to figure out new territories for it. And then the campus, which I produced for Jason, which is now called Deaf Day, yeah. is going to be... Deaf Day, that, is, is this good or are we worried about... Uh, it's, no, they're doing it on purpose. They're, they're yeah. doing it on purpose. That's what yeah. I, I figured. It's yeah. kind yeah. of the new thing. They do these titles. They and do. And it's so fun. We shot this movie in 2017. So uh -huh. before Happy Death Day came out, it had, theirs had been shot, but I'd never even heard of it. Yeah. And mine was is about a time loop, and it is a horror movie. No, and I do have a blonde lead actress. Uh, that I had suggested putting somebody yeah. in there different. Uh, <laughs> I did. She bears Brian. a striking resemblance. There's actual shots in the movies that are similar. Using even and that I, contrast of blood. No, no one will ever believe me. No, they won't I, believe you. But but but, but you'll, said, you'll know. I know. And, and, and you know what? Maybe people will enjoy that. They'll be like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is a. Like, it's still a different. It's still not it's, the it's same a totally movie. Different movie. And there's a and creature a, element to the movie. And you so, have a responsibility to your investors. And you have this, to finish this, the movie. Yeah. This title will sell more than the campus. So. Well, yeah. that's like nibbles and palm trees. Have at it. Like mm -hmm. same thing. We did it. The cir circus road when we wrote it. I had gone to the Clown Motel in Tonopah. So I was like obsessed with the Clown Motel. I'm like, oh, I'm going to film a movie here. I love this. And it's going to be about, you know, the bride. She's kind of a runaway bride, blah, blah, blah. Well, then another movie came out after we had already wrote it, right. sold it, called Clown Motel. And I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm like, oh, well, now we can't shoot at Tonopah. Um, Mint Collins, who's the director, who was my co writer, we're like, fuck. Like and there was some similarities, but I didn't watch the film on purpose. Right. Of like you know, it's a bride, it's bridesmaids, you know, right. the the clown because of the motel, it's with the cemetery, so we had to fix it, mm -hmm. you know. Go. What up? Oh. But that's so. What's your film called? Death Day. Death Day. Yeah. Oh well, you'll probably kill, crush it because yeah, will... it's yeah, it's coming out in May. I think it, it'll do fine. It'll do fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but you're there's that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, how do you get? Do you get financing pre financing or do you get independent? Um, most every th it's been it's it's it differs. Um, I've produced five on my own that I own. And three of those were private financing. Um, two were through a company. Oh, the company. Yeah, through the through a distribution like production deal, like go to AFM, yeah. you know, meet the guy, and then two years later they say, "Hey, oh, you still want to make a movie?" Yeah, you know, like that kind of. Wow, thing. that's good. I mean, that's I, I hear that, like that's getting harder to do at AFM. Yeah, I it's been I, the campus was private. Um, between I, I financed some of it, and then um, you know we had some uh, angel investors. Like like we did it basically almost like a crowdfunding, but not really. Okay. Like we went to people. I had a producer that went to people he actually knew, and was like, "Hey, we you know we're giving away like so many points for so much money," and got like you know somewhere around twenty small investments. Right. You know, like in the, you know, thousand dollar range, that's, stuff like that's that. That's a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. And it, it can was, be, and yeah. it also can be complicated because it's, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the interesting thing that most people don't examine is legal for a movie yeah. is going to cost the same amount whether you do a f zero sum movie or you do a gazillion dollars. I mean, obviously it goes up. $5,000 for my doc for E&O insurance. Yeah. And it wasn't the insurance. It was the E&O? The errors and omissions. Yeah. It was the lawyer 
to watch the movie. Oh yeah, they have to because they have to. They have to, yeah. Give it, yeah, they have to give it the. They have to actually sign off on it. And yeah, and it, it ended up being a little bit less than that. Mm. They ended up charging less. But then when we made changes to the film, they had oh. to. I, which I didn't know, they had to show it again. Even when you're like, look, we didn't do anything. We're like, no, nope. we can't do the letters. So you're like, well, we just spent five thousand dollars, which could have gone to right. the film. I mean, there's so much. That kind of stuff. That There's a like. lot of ancillary businesses that uh, make very and good And you also have 20 of people who are looking at you going, where's my money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I had the, I, I was like, I need to, you know, um, we're producing. I'm like, you really just need people who, who really want to have a film yeah. and want to go to the festivals. I mean, I try to tell people all the time, like, if you haven't been to a movie festival and part of a movie festival. Right. What a shame, because it's so magical. You meet all these filmmakers. Mm -hmm. You're on vacation for a week. You drink your face off. You watch some great films. And they do all those special events for just the filmmakers. And it's, like, really magical. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, but, and and it's nice buzz for your film. and Yeah, it's a great exposure. Yeah. So if we want to find out more about Sadie. Uh, find me on Twitter okay. at Sadie underscore cats, which I never check, but I do <laughs> sometimes. Um, and then my Instagram is Sadie Katz, Sadie Katz, S A D I E K A T Z, and um, Facebook. You're I, I'm fool, and I Hit have some miss. fan. Just, I have yeah. two. I have like a couple fan pages. I don't even know if I did the one. It just keeps up. <laughs> you just have Somebody it. Somebody else is doing it's it. It's that guy from India. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's that um, guy from India. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah, everything's under my name. Okay. Uh, Easy to find. Awesome. Nice thing. I love talking to you guys. Thank yeah. you so like much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Yeah. I know, yeah. We yeah. can keep going for a couple more. But yes, no. yes. But thank you so much for coming in. We <laughs> really you. appreciate it. And we look forward to supporting whatever you do next. Um we are going to okay. I have to turn it around sure. to take